Okay, so let's see if you can solve this very interesting problem about fractions and decimals. And the question is the following. What fraction is equivalent to this decimal right here? And the decimal is 0.27272727. So what we have here is what we call a repeating decimal. And the digits 27 are repeating. So we could write this whole thing like this, 0.27 repeating. So hopefully you're familiar with repeating decimals. This is a very important topic when it comes to fractions and decimals. But here is the thing about repeating decimals. All repeating decimals can be expressed as a fraction. So this is the question. And uh, a lot of you actually never learned this in school. Uh, it's kind of surprising to me that some textbooks uh, teach this, some do not. Uh, some teachers teach this, some do not. But uh, maybe you could still figure this out. Okay, so I'm not going to tell you that you can't do this uh, problem. What I am going to show you here is a very interesting procedure so we can determine the exact fraction for this decimal. But uh, if you want to go ahead and try this problem, put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'll show you this very interesting uh, procedure that makes uh, solving a problem like this very easy. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need assistance in learning mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out okay now one uh, quick thought here or just um actually i want to highlight something before i show you the actual answer so i'm saying that there is a fraction that represents uh, this decimal so any number that can be expressed as a fraction of whole numbers like three um, over five or something like this, this is what we call a rational number all right, so rational numbers are numbers that can be expressed as fractions of integers, to be kind of uh, more specific about this. Now, let's talk about this uh, number pi here. I'll show you the answer in just one second, but I, want, I kind of really want to set up this problem so we understand why this is an important concept. Okay, so if I said, hey, what is uh, pi? What are the digits of pi? Now, most people might say, well, it's uh, around 3.14, Mr. U2 Math Man. I said, boy, you are absolutely correct. That is an approximation. Uh, of, actually, that's a pretty rough approximation of pi, okay, 3.14. And hopefully you are familiar with pi, okay, very, very important. Matter of fact, it might be one of the most important. No, oh, actually, let me take that back. It probably is one of the most important numbers in all of mathematics. But anyways, pi is approximately 3.14. Now, we could continue to add more digits to pi. But like, well, let's get some more digits in here. But here's the thing about this uh, value. This value, the digits do not repeat. So we don't have patterns like this going on in pi, and it doesn't terminate. So if we want to find all the digits of pi, we actually have to go out to infinity, and both you and I do not have that kind of time. So pi is what we call an irrational number, and what that means um, by definition is pretty much what I told you. Uh, irrational numbers are numbers that cannot be expressed as fractions, and if you have a non-repeating, non-terminating decimal, you can never ever find a fraction uh, that represents that value. But in our situation, we have these lovely two seven, two sevens, and two sevens repeating. So this is a repeating decimal. So indeed, absolutely, there is a fraction that represents this. Okay, so now that I built this whole thing up, let's go ahead and take a look at the correct answer. The correct answer is three over 11. Okay, now if you got this right, boy, that is really impressive. Matter of fact, I'm gonna give you a nice little happy face and A. 150% multiple stars. Matter of fact, if you were in my math class, I'd say, you know what? You're dismissed. Enjoy the rest of the year off. I don't know how you're getting so good at math. You might be watching that guy on YouTube. Now, here's the deal. Um, even if you didn't get this right, again, it's possible that you uh, have uh, not learned this. Now, you know, for me, I've been teaching math for decades, studying uh, math for many, many, many years, and I have a massive collection of uh, math textbooks that go back from the 1950s, 60s, 70s, 80s, you, you, you name it. And even throughout these textbooks, it seems to me that this uh, kind of skill or this procedure 
was taught more frequently back in the good old days and a little bit less today. But, you know, uh, the procedure I'm going to show you is not the only way you probably could solve this. There's probably some other creative ways. So if you didn't, you know, use a procedure, just kind of figure this out. That is super impressive. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this right now. And what I'm going to show you is a procedure. And, uh, uh, you know, with this particular you know, procedure, you can obviously answer other questions like this. But let's just quickly review the uh, kind of reality that some decimals can be expressed as fractions. Let's go ahead and just take a look at a few easy examples. So here is point three, right? So point three, if I say this using place value, this is what? This is in the tenths uh, place. So the equivalent fraction is three tenths, right? Or, or I can say this decimal as three tenths. So 0.3 is equal to the fraction three over 10. All right, so pretty simple example. Here is another simple example. 0.25 is what? 25 hundredths. So this two is in a tenths uh, spot. Five, the five is in a hundredths place. So again, we need to be familiar with place value. You know, all this kind of basic stuff that you learn way back in elementary and primary school. So 0.25 is the same thing as 2,500. So we can write this as 25 over 100. And of course, we can simplify this fraction into the fraction 1 fourth. Okay, so as, uh, you know, we see here, you know, there are decimals, uh, you know, plenty of decimals that have direct fraction uh, equivalents. Now, of course, there are other decimals that do not like the value of pi. Okay, so what is this procedure that I'm going to show you? Well, I'm going to show you it right now. Okay, so again, if you don't understand what's going on here, well, just kind of, you know, uh, maybe take some notes if you want to kind of remember how to do this. So here is the deal. All right, so here's our decimal. It's 0.272727. We see that we have a repeating decimal. The two sevens are, are, are um, the two seven is repeating. So instead of writing all these two sevens over and over again, we could just put a bar over the repeating part. So all this is equal to 0.27 repeating. Okay, so this is the actual the correct mathematical way to write it, but it means all of this. Okay, so here is what we're going to do. We're going to let x equal this repeating decimal. And we're going to write it this way. We're going to put x is equal to 0.272727. And then we'll put dot, 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 okay, indicating that these two sevens continue on to infinity. All right, now what we're going to do is the following. We're going to observe this decimal, and we're going to see at what place value does, um, does this decimal uh, repeat. So basically, you can see the, the 2 is in a tenths place. The 7 is in the hundredths. Uh, place. So it's repeating at the hundredths or the first uh, digits is repeating at the hundredths place. Okay. Now I want you to kind of keep that in mind because we're going to be using this value 100 here in a second. Okay. So, all right, let's just kind of review uh, what's going on so far. So we have a repeating decimal. We're going to let X equal to this repeating decimal. Then we're going to uh, study the repeating decimal and identify what is the last digit uh, that is repeating. So this is the 10 spot. This is the hundredths place. So it repeats at the end of the hundredths uh, place. And of course it goes on and on and on. Okay. So we have identified 100 as the hundredths place. And now what do we do next? Well, let's go ahead and take the next step, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel before I show you the rest of this interesting little procedure. Now I love what I'm doing. You know, I've been on YouTube for many, many years. I mean, it's a great platform for me to teach and, you know, basically reach as many people as I possibly can that need help in mathematics. And for me, you know, I really need to feel like, well, I'm very passionate about it, helping as many people as possible. Right now, it's not looking too good for uh, the status of math proficiency, even worldwide. Uh, of course, in, uh, even in, unfortunately in the United States, math scores continue to go down and the uh, demand uh, for technology is going up, which of course, you know, uh, is directly related to people's abilities to under, you know, have basically analytical skills, mathematical skills. So for me, you know, I'm going to be like, well, if maybe I can get my content out there, if I can teach in a way that people like and understand, then I feel like I'm maybe, you know, doing a little bit to help the world understand math a little bit better. I know that's a little bit dramatic, but that's why I do these videos. So the way to support my work, okay, which is a ton of videos I'm pretty much posting all the time, is simply hit that subscribe button. And if you're gonna do that, hit that notification bell 
as well so you can get my latest videos. Okay, so let's go back and finish up the rest of this procedure. Uh, this is actually pretty interesting. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is that we looked at the, um, the decimal and we're seeing that it is uh, finished repeating at the hundreds place. So we're gonna use this uh, value, 100, and we're gonna use it in a very creative way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our um, value, remember we let x equal to 0.272727, we say, okay, it's repeating at the hundreds uh, spot, hundreds place, so we're gonna multiply both sides of this equ uh, equation, okay, or this what this, this is an equation, x is equal to this, we're gonna multiply both sides of this by 100. So remember in algebra, you can do whatever you want to an equation as long as you do the same thing to both sides. So we're gonna take 100, and of course we understand why we're using 100. We're gonna uh, multiply both sides of the equation by 100. Now, when we do that, we're gonna get 100x is equal to 27.2727. Okay, so you can see, when I take this 100 and I multiply by 0.2727, it's simply gonna move the decimal point over two places to the right. Okay, so hopefully you're with me, like, yes, Mr. YouTube Math Man, continue on. I'll be like, okay, I, I hear you, I hear you. All right, so what are we gonna do? All right, so we have this 100x is equal to 27.2727 repeating. But here, I have a whole number. Now, this part is repeating, okay, so it's 27.2727. And what we're gonna do is effectively kind of truncate. We're gonna get rid of all these repeating two sevens. So how can we do this? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to subtract uh, this x, our original um, equation. We're going to subtract uh, it from both sides of the equation. Okay, so remember, x is equal to 0.2727. So we're going to subtract uh, this. And remember, we are dealing with an equation. Okay, so what this is equal to this. So we're subtracting the same value from both sides of the equation. All right, now again, this is this little crazy procedure that uh, is not taught. Again, it's this is not taught in uh, many math books. I don't know why, uh, but anyways, this is how it works. Okay, so now that we, we're going to go ahead and subtract this x. Remember, we already established that x is equal to 0.2727 repeating. So we're gonna subtract the, this value from both sides of the equation. So algebraically, it would look like this. And when we add down, what are we gonna get? We're gonna get 100x minus 1x, that's 99x. Now this is the best part of this problem. I'm gonna show you it right now. Now when we subtract this 0.272727 from 27.2727, remember this is repeating and this is also repeating, okay? So this is the repeating part. All this repeating part is gonna get subtracted away. Remember I'm subtracting the repeating part. I'm kind of truncating all these infinite uh, t uh, 27s, 0.27s repeating, okay? So these are going to uh, kind of uh, eliminate one another. And what we're left with, this is a little trick that we're kind of doing here, is 99x is equal to 27, okay? You're like, oh, okay, interesting. 99x is equal to 27. So now let's go ahead and solve for x. And when we solve for x, we're gonna divide both sides of the equation by 99. You can see that work right here. And then we can simply uh, uh, reduce this fraction and of course, uh, nine goes into 27 three times and nine goes into 99 11 times. And here, X is equal to three over 11. Okay, so this is what this is equal to. All right, now here in our equation, X is equal to three over 11. So right here, here's our equation. X is what? Well, X is three over 11, which is well, not over 10, over 11. That's equal to 0.27 repeating. Now, if you don't believe me, go into your calculator. Matter of fact, you should do this. Take three and divide it by 11, and you will see all these lovely uh, two sevens repeat. Okay, so this is how you solve this type of question. And there probably is other ways to solve it, but this is one of the most common kind of procedures to solve these type of problems. And, you know, probably somebody thought, you know, this is not this, uh, not that important of a skill to have. But uh, actually, I think this is something that uh, should be taught and should be emphasized because it really uh, reinforces the concept of rational numbers and irrational numbers, right? So a rational number, again, in mathematics, are numbers that can be expressed as fractions of integers, okay? You really have to understand 
the real number system to be successful in mathematics. So that would include things like the counting numbers, natural numbers, uh, integers, rational numbers, irrational numbers, etc., etc. Okay, now if you want to learn more about basic mathematics, uh, to include uh, some of the things that we're talking about here, a uh, couple quick uh, uh, tips. One, I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel on basic math. But really, if you want to learn basic math from me, check out my Math Foundations course. It's a little mini course, a uh, three-chapter mini course. I go over uh, place value. If you forgot all this stuff, the tenths place, hundredths place, I teach you fractions, percent, order of operations. It's just a really great starter course for those of you that want to review basic math. Now, if you want to take it a step further, check out my Math Skills Rebuilder course because in that course I teach you basic math but also I teach you a ton of algebra, geometry, even some trigonometry and some probability and statistics. And if you're not in any of those courses and just need to learn maybe like Algebra 2 or Algebra 1, I'm going to leave a link to all those courses as well. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.